Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. We're gonna go through a vast overview of the EMC Unity SAN. This includes all of the different sections on the EMC Unity. So let's log in right now and go through that. All right, so here we are logged into our EMC Unisphere. You can see that there's a few different uh, dashboard entries in here, which you can easily go and customize. You can click on the configure on each one of these and customize it how you see fit. You can also click on the drop down and say customize to be able to add various other uh, blocks um, where you can actually just add storage health, system capacity, you know, tier capacity, what your pools look like, all those sort of things. It's actually a very, very good um, dashboard where you can easily see the performance of your VNX. You can also create multiple dashboards by just clicking on the plus and I can just call it test. And then I can just create a brand new dashboard in here and then go ahead and just add some new, you know, add view block, for example, and it'll add that into here. We then got the system view, which gives you a summary of the name of your, of your SAN, also the, uh, you know, the software version, how much power it's using, etc., etc. It'll tell you if something needs attention, as you can see that there's no hardware issues. You can also have a look at the enclosures which includes the DPE, right, as well as your DAEs, your disk arrays, and then your main disk, uh, your processors as well. Uh, it shows you the uh, the temperatures of the units. You can see the front of the units and all of the disks, right, the associated disks. Clicking on those disks will show you the information to the right of that disk, the speed of the disk, uh, you know, the, the product serial number, etc. So if you ever need to log a ticket, you can straight away see from here the information of those disks. So as I said, you can see the rear and you can also see the top of the unit and you can click on each individual unit here to see the actual different components and what their current health is as well as some different information including the part numbers, etc. You can go through the performance tab and you can actually customize and actually visible, you know, visibly see your your IOPS of your units. The service tab here shows you some information about that Unity itself, including the serial number and the um, the software. You'll see some contact information. Um, you'll see some other things regarding your contracts, your support credentials. You can go ahead and customize this. You can test to see if um, you know ESRS is enabled, which is Secure Remote Services which lets you have your, your SANS talk directly into Dell EMC. And then having a look through the service tasks, we can actually go and customize some of those protocols. So for example, you can see that SSH is enabled, so you can go ahead and disable SSH. You can actually customize a lot of things. You can enter safe mode, you can reboot storage processes individually, all from this service task tab. You then can customize your technical advisories. So you'll see that there currently are none enabled here, but you can actually go and add technical advisories directly into your login dashboard portal here. And then the logs of the EMC Unisphere itself. So you can actually see what the uh, activity has been like on your SAN. We move into the storage area here on our EMC Unisphere, and we're gonna just have a look at how to create a storage pool. So you can see that there is already a storage pool in here with a certain amount of terabytes already allocated as well as the free terabytes used. So the, the way that you would create your, um, your pool is by clicking on the plus up here, and I can then create my pool and call it whatever I want. So I'm just gonna call it test pool. This is a test pool. And next. Then you got your different tiers of disks. So uh, certain disks are faster than others. So you see that there are three main capacities, extreme, performance, and capacity tier. And you can see the actual different types in here. So your extreme performance are your SAS flash disks. So your, your solid state disks, obviously there are no moving parts. So the capacity, uh, not the capacity, the speed is gonna be a lot faster than other disks. You've also got your standard performance tier, which are your standard SAS disks. 
and then your capacity tier, which is your Neoline SAS or even your SATA disks, which are slightly slower. You'll see that here, I've just got performance tier disks that are available. So I've got 12 unused disks with a total capacity of around 19 terabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my performance tier of disks, which is the disks that I want to use um, for creating this pool. You'll see that by default, it is defined itself as a RAID 5, which is a four plus one, so one failover, with a maximum usable capacity of 12.8 terabytes. So even though I've got 19 terabytes, it's gonna only use 12.8 because it obviously needs some disks for redundancy. You can go ahead and change your actual RAID configuration straight from here. You can go to a RAID 5, a RAID 6, or a RAID 10, or a RAID 1, 0, whatever you need to call it. You can also drop down what sort of RAID 5 configurations you want. You can actually customize it. I can select RAID 10, and I can customize it as well. So we're just going to leave it as a RAID 5, which is a 4 plus 1, and OK. And then click on Next. And then in here, I actually select what drives I want to use. So what disks out of the available disks do I want to use? I don't have to use all of them, or I can use all of the ones that are available. So in the drop down list here, you'll see that it's automatically going to allocate a certain amount of disks. So I can add none of the 12 drives, I can add five of the 12, or I can add 10 of the 12. Now the reason it's doing this is based on my RAID configuration. So it's going to pick the, the amount of disks that are going to be relevant and best suited for your RAID configuration that you've used. So we're, what we'll do here is we're just gonna say add five of my 12, which is gonna use a capacity of 6.4 terabytes. It's gonna be using a total of five drives with a total of 6.4 terabytes of usable space. You can create a uh, capacity profile name, which lets you essentially uh, you know, talk to VMware and using VVOLs or your virtual volumes based on storage provisioning, um, if you do want to use that capacity. Uh, we're not gonna use this in this instance, but it is a nice feature to use if you are wanting to use VMware uh, for uh, virtual volumes. You'll see a summary here. I'm using Performance CF RAID 5, using my SAS disks, and I'm using five of them with a capacity of 6.4 and I've got my used fast cache is no. Now this is mainly because I don't have any of my uh, solid states or my, you know, my flash disks in this particular pool. And go ahead and click on finish. So there's now gonna give me a summary of what is happening. So you'll see that it's uh, gonna go ahead and create that pool, assign those disks into my pool, and then they'll be usable so that I can create my LUNs or I can go and create my particular SIFs or NFS shares uh, on top of that. So that is complete and you'll see that it's got a nice tick. If it doesn't have a tick and it doesn't say 100%, you've had a problem and you'll have to go back and diagnose what has happened. So we can click on close and you'll see now that, that I have a new pool called test pool with a usable disk size of 6.4 and obviously my free is 6.4. Also, you can see here, it's only got the one tier because it's got only one speed of disks. If there was different speed of disks in there, so if there was a mixture of SAS, uh, flash of standard SAS or of Neoline SAS, uh, you're gonna see different tiers as well as how many drives, etc. You'll see that there are no data stores, no file systems and no LUNs created yet because this is just a pool, essentially a container that I'm going to use to allocate or create LUNs or file systems within this particular pool, all right? So this is uh, created a pool, but there's nothing actually utilizing the space of this pool as yet. So that is how you create a pool on the Unisphere. We're now gonna go into the different sections here of your storage. So there are two main areas, block and file. So block, we are talking SAN, file, we are talking NAS, Block, we're talking about LUNs and using connectivity such as iSCSI and Fiber Channel. And you can use that to, you know, to allocate to VMware, uh, to set up as data stores, etc., cetera, um, as raw storage. Uh, and also you can use a file setup, which is you creating a file system 
where you can allocate and create SMB shares, NFS shares, and I can essentially make this as a uh, file server or a file repository uh, where I can have computers on my network connecting to certain shares and, and folders that I've created directly within my Unisphere. Let's just go into block here and you'll see that I've got no LUNs configured, all right? So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go and create a LUN. You create just one, but you can easily just create more than one if you need to, okay? We're just gonna create one for this, and we're just gonna call it test LUN. This is a test LUN. What pool do I want to use? So I'm gonna use the pool that I've just created, which is a test pool. I know that it has 6.4 terabytes free. Tiering policy, start high, then auto tier. Now again, this is relating to your tiers. If you have tiers of different disk speeds set up, if you don't have that and you've just got one speed of disks, then this, this is really uh, irrelevant. And then what size LUN do we want to create? Okay, so clearly I've got 6.4 terabytes, so I can create a LUN up to 6.4 terabytes if I want to but obviously we're gonna create, you know, maybe some smaller ones. So let's just create a 500 gig LUN in here. We're gonna leave the host IO limit as uh, no limit. There's obviously no option there, um, but you can create an IO limit, an input output um, limit if you need to. You'll now see that that has got a 500 gig LUN has been created within that Unisphere portal. So here in the file area, under the storage tab on your Unisphere, you can create your particular shares, your SMB shares, your NFS shares, your NAS servers, etc., so that you can essentially create a file system or a fancy file server. Obviously it's not a server, it's a file system because it's sitting on a NAS or a, ne or a network attached storage. Uh, that you can create right from within your Unisphere protocol, your, your Unisphere portal. Now, of course, before you go and do this, you need to make sure that you've got that pool created, because unless you have the pool created, you won't be able to create an actual share to allocate this particular um, you know storage that you want. So you then can go into the VMware area here. So the EMC um, Unities have got great integration within VMware. So you can go ahead and customize this so that your VMware and your Unity can talk together fairly, fairly well. We're not gonna talk about this in great detail right here, but just know that that feature is available if you so choose to have it. Under the Access tab, you now got your hosts. So this is all of your hosts that you will have visible or that are visible to your EMC Unity. So you can't go and create, for example, a block LUN and allocate it to a host unless it's visible in here first. So you need to make sure that your initiators are configured. So I'm gonna go into initiators tab here. You do not have any initiators configured. So if I'm using um, fiber channel, for example, and that is connected, uh, you know, my SAN is connected over fiber channel to a fiber channel switch, that switch in turn should have um, hosts, for example, ESXi hosts connected to it over fiber channel to this particular switch. And then on the switch, I'm gonna be doing the appropriate zoning. So this is the zoning that needs to be done where I tell the EMC Unity that the path needs to go from this particular storage processor over to this particular host, from the second storage processor to a different host, etc., etc. As long as those zones are in place and those zones are saved and committed to that fiber switch, those hosts and the initiators that are irrelevant will appear in here. You'll see the initiators as well as the initiator path, and then you'll see the details of the host in here as well. You can also configure this via iSCSI using the iSCSI initiators. As long as they're configured, the initiators are running, and you've got the appropriate um, IQN uh, you know, the unique identifiers, etc. you can go ahead and customize this. You can also go plus host. You can add a host manually if you know the relevant information. You can also cancel wizard. You can also set up a subnet. So if you wanted to go and scan a particular subnet, you can actually do that as well. 
uh, in case you're not using zoning, for example, you can actually scan a subnet where you can, you can tell the Unity, go and sweep this subnet and look for hosts that are going to be used on this EMC Unity. But as I said, you won't be able to really allocate anything uh, to a particular host, like a LUN, for example, to use as a data store, unless you've got hosts and initiators uh, listed within here. Under the VMware area, you can have access uh, to your VMware environment. You can add your vCenter environments, your ESXi hosts. You can see you know, your virtual machines, your virtual disks quite easily from this one single portal. The EMC Unities have got great integration. You can manage all of your snapshots. Uh, you can enable your schedules of your snapshots, how often you want them to back up, how long you want the retention periods to be, you know, how long they need to be retained before they can be deleted, etc., etc. You got things like replication. If you want to set up replication between different um, different SANs or different NASs so that the data is replicated, your LUNs, your, your shares are replicated from one to another. This is relevant for things like uh, disaster recovery and for backups, etc. So you can import allows you to move legacy VNX block and file resources to the Unity. So this is helpful if you're say migrating from a VNX to a Unity and you don't want to lose any of your configs, for example, you can actually import things where we can monitor all of the alerts, what's happening, what is the health look like on my Unity and any jobs that are created in here. So what has been happening on my Unity? You know, have I deleted things? Have I added things? What is the, what is the history of my Unity? So this is great if you're trying to troubleshoot when there's an error. You can navigate through your events, through your alerts and your jobs to see exactly what has been, what sort of activity has been taking place on your unities. And then you've got the support area where you've got a whole bunch of information regarding the support of your EMC unity. So we're talking about support forums, product portal, portals, um, how to replace drives, documentation, etc., etc. Really cool feature, go through this and actually get familiar with exactly what the support options are available to you. Speak to EMC if you do want some further information. On your top right, you've got some options here. You can see some alarms of what's been happening. You can go and configure some settings here. This is regarding the overall settings of your Unity. And that is it, that is the basic overview of the EMC Unity. So this is a great, great quality SAN can be used as a SAN or a NAS device. Uh, please feel free to comment down below um, if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital Byte Computing, just on the button there for more videos.